All right, guys, welcome back. So now it's the time we bring our simulation back. We have two simulations. You can choose either one, or if you have multiple ones, you can choose one of the best. I don't quite like what's going on with these guys, although they are okay, but I think they're too stiff anyway. So I kind of like the the first one I have. Uh, yeah, I think that one is actually pretty good. So I'm gonna use this one instead. Okay, so. Let me stop the animation. So what, I, what I'm going to do here is go for File, Exports, and then Maya Cache. And then I can put it into my scene folder and maybe create a new folder and call it uh, Jacket Stem. OK. And then give it a name. Uh, so Jacket Stem. And then maybe uh, also have offset 49. So it's, you know, it's clear that I have 49 frame offset. Scene layer of geometry, weld things together, centimeters, right? And hit OK. And that's going to export this out. All right. Now I'll go back to Maya. And then I can, this is the file that we uh, just finished caching. Okay. Uh, so we go for file imports and we can import the uh, jacket simulation uh, that we exported from uh, Marvelous, right? This is the one actually exported from Marvelous. Go ahead and import that. And uh, you can see after that, uh, the, the thing you imported will be actually the last frame. Okay, so what you have to do is uh, go to cache and then geometry cache. Oh, and by the way, if you have this weird uh, shading issue, you go to Mesh to, or actually Mesh Display, and Unlock Normal. That should fix it. And you can also soften the edge. All right. And then you go ahead and go for the Cache, Geometry Cache, and Import Cache. And also go to the uh, Jacket Simulation and load the other file, which is .xml, with the same name of that. All right, cool. Now, nothing has changed this because we have actually shifted the time. So it should be starting from frame zero. So let's go there and take a look. You can see now it does start from frame zero, right? So to shift the time back, what you have to do is go to the attribute editor and look for the, you can right click here and look for the cache. Uh, so the node that does have a cache uh, at the last of its name. And make sure that the start frame is negative 49. And you can see now you're shifting the time backwards. All right. Now go ahead and play the animation. You can see now we have the correct animation, right? Now it's just a matter of copying or uh, somehow get the data from this guy to our actual model here, right? So because it's already banded with the skin, so that wouldn't be very easy. Uh, what you have to do is Control D to duplicate your model, right, to get a copy, and then you can name this guy cat a uh, coat loads them. Okay, it had the original one that is banded, and this new one you just grab it and then Control Select the simulation, and you go for deform and then wrap. All right. And when that is done, you can also add the simulation and just leaving you the, the actual uh, duplicated simulation mesh. And let's play the animation. You can see now this, this mesh is now reading our simulation, right? Cool. All right. So that's how you transfer over the simulation back to the model that you really wanted to eventually render. Uh, if you zoom in and take a closer look, you can see now it's not guaranteed to be all perfect, right? Uh, you'll see some clipping happening. Uh, I think the thing I need to fix is over here. Uh, to fix things like this, you can use blend shape. So go ahead and uh, open the shape editor here, and you can create a blend shape and call this one um, jacket stem and uh, corrective, right? And then we can give it a target. And then you go use maybe sculpting tool and use grab and basically just, just drag it out, right? To fix that clipping issue. 
right? You can either choose to leave it on all the time, or you can animate this by setting keys to turn it on before the last frame. But I think I should be able to get away with just turning it on all the time. Have some issue here too. I probably need to fix all these also. Right, so it's not necessarily to be all correct uh, when uh, you simulate it in the first place, or or when you're done with simulation, uh, you could you could use corrective shapes, right, blend shapes to fix whatever you wanna fix. All right, cool. So when that is done, let me close the shape editor, and let me take a look at the final result. I'm gonna go for show none, show polygon only. Okay. And also, maybe I can make it look make it look a little bit more fancier by turning on anti-aliasing. Uh, I have visual lighting actually. Let me turn it also. Turn the light and shadow. All right. And space uh, control space right to go to full uh, screen and go play the animation. Right. You can see now we have this simulation copied over to our model. All right, so that's the basic idea to use Marvel Designer to simulate your garment. Uh, so the core technique here is that you create a proxy model that is simple enough to simulate uh, with some modeling and also ZBrush to zero measure it to get a simpler model, right? You, you transfer over that to Marvelers. Also, you cache your animation as a Lambic cache and also bring that to Marvelers. Okay. And then when you're done with that, you just simply simulate in Marvelers, uh, do a few tries, use different presets until you find something you like, right? And then bring the, the, that cache, uh, that result back with Maya cache. And then the, uh, the in the Maya cache, when the Maya cache is in, uh, uh, you just rough deform your original model. Uh, some tricky thing is that you can shift the timing so that you can have some resting time to start with and uh, shift the time back when you're done. And oftentimes you can either in Marvel Designer, you can give it a little drag to help it simulate better. Or here in Maya, if there's something that you don't like, you can also use Blend Shift to fix it. So it's not, ha it doesn't have to be all like perfect in some of the stages in the middle, right? You fix the final here in Maya using uh, Almost like post processing, right? You you, you use blend shape to, to correct any error. All right, cool. That's gonna be everything I want to talk about with its uh, garment simulation. Okay, um, so when you're doing simulation, also be aware of the resolution you're going for, right? If your garment is like this dense, then when you're doing like the actual simulation model make sure that it's also some something around its density. Denser doesn't really help, right? So um, also, uh, if it's easier, right, uh, you can also try to simplify a lot of the parts. Like you know, these guys here, they are not actually having any simulation. They're just following along with a much simpler model. So the folding back of the the collar and cuff, I basically, and also this guy, right? Those things are all like simplified. We we not we are actually not really needing to simulate everything, right? So a simpler model uh, and makes things easy to do. It's probably the, a better idea than trying to make everything realistic, right? You can see this is not bad, right? The important thing is what's down there. You know those guys. So what's happening here on the collar? No one would say, okay, that's not flipping, right? No one would judge that, right? It's just, just it just have to be convincing enough. Uh, so don't try to make everything realistic, and don't try to simulate everything possible. And uh, this is a lot of work, right? And our goal is storytelling, not you know a very realistic simulation uh, by any means. All right, cool. So that's going to be everything I want to talk about. And thanks for watching. See you next time.